meeting of the Melbourne City Council to order. Uh, the March 18, 2019 meeting of the Melbourne City Council. Uh, we're going to get started on time. And uh, for those who need to know, Mayor Hampton and uh, Councilman Wadabush are celebrating um, spring break. So uh, they won't be joining us, but hopefully uh, Councilman Rose will be. Um, after the call to order, are there any additions to the agenda? Any changes in the agenda? Otherwise, I'll accept the motion to approve. Motion to approve the agenda. Second. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion? Ready to vote on the agenda. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. So the communications part of the meeting now, and this is when uh, I'll open the floor up to anybody that wants to speak. For the public. And uh, Mr. Jensen. Pick me, pick me. <laughs> Please uh, introduce yourself and uh, your address, and uh, the floor is yours, Joe. Okay. Hi everybody, my name is Joe Jennison. I'm the Director of Main Street and Marketing for the Mount Vernon Lisbon Community Development Group. And I live at 100 First Street, Southeast. I want to come here to talk to you today because we took a group of 27 volunteers to um, Des Moines last Friday. And Governor Kim Reynolds gave us this award. It's called the Spirit of Main Street Award. So Main Street has been a, a program in Iowa for 30 plus years. And throughout the course of that time, they've only handed this award to now seven communities. So we're one of seven. So it's kind of a big deal that we got it. They often hand it to uh, individuals and legis a lot of legislators that have, have done a lot for the Main Street program. But it was really special that we got this. And um, uh, uh, we had a really nice time. And uh, it's uh, quite and honor for all of us to be known as the Community of Mount Vernon, the Main Street, Iowa, Spirit of Main Street Award. And um, there's a couple other things coming up I want you guys to know. Uh, four of us are going to be going to the National Main Street Conference, including Stephanie, uh, next week. And uh, we're going to be uh, uh, offering a, a workshop there on working with the Smithsonian. Carol, from uh, the director of the Smithsonian, is going to come out and uh, 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 present this with me. And then uh, we've got 70 Main Street uh, communities coming here uh, in May, May 20, 21, 22. And I wanted everybody to know that because we're going to have some activities for everyone in town to meet these people. These are 70 people that do my job in towns all over the state. And they're coming here to learn how we do this. So I think that's pretty neat. Two other projects that I'm working on, uh, I think Wednesday we're going to announce the big piece for Chop the Walk. And then also um, working on the um, Heritage Days Committee, and it looks like we're going to have riots come back this year. It's the first time in a long, long time. So that's very exciting. All this has happened this last week, so very good. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Thanks for representing Mount Vernon very, very well. Where are you going to display the award at? Your, it's at the visitor center. visitor center. Okay. You can come in and pick it up and hold it and thank the academy whenever you want. Okay. <laughs> no problem. Just like Nick is doing right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be, be <laughs> Don't drop that. Don't drop it. Yeah. 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 I attended that school. Well, 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 I was uh, glad to see that, or I didn't know this, but uh, Kevin Rogers, who was very, very good, was a lover and alumnus. Uh, very involved with the Alumni Foundation, mm -hmm. and might have been on. The, well, he was on the. He was he was the head of the alumni for quite a while. Mm -hmm. uh, who passed away this year, but that he, that his former that his role was in that same uh, spot in the West Branch, and there was some recognition for him that I was uh, uh, yes. very pleased about. So that's good that's for Kevin. Um, thank you, Joe. Um, anybody else in the public here to speak to any uh, any item? Okay. Not. Nah, we'll move communications to the consent agenda. Have four items in the agenda. Uh, consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve those items? So moved. I second. Thank you. All in favor of the motion? Aye. And approve the consent agenda. Say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Public hearing? We have none. So we'll move on to the ordinance approval amendment. And for this, I need to read uh, for ordinance 2 20 2019 A, providing that general property taxes levied and collected each year on certain property located within the Spring Meadow Heights Urban Renewal Area, in the City of Mount Vernon, County of Lynn, State of Iowa, by and for the benefit of the State of Iowa, City of Mount Vernon, County of Lynn, Mount Vernon Community School District, and other taxing districts, 
be paid to a special fund for payment of principal and interest loans, monies advanced to and indebtedness including bonds issued or to be issued, incurred by the city in connection with the Spring Meadow Heights Urban Renewal Area. This is phase one of the first phase one parcel. We are to the uh, third reading here. Um, Chris, do you have anything to add to it? Uh, no, I heard nothing. Heard nothing? Okay. Um, well, given is, that there was unanimous approval both the prior readings and there's been no other comments, I move to approve the third reading of Ordinance 2-20-2019. Thank you, Stephanie. And I second that motion. Thank you, Deb. Uh, it's been moved and seconded to approve the third final reading of Ordinance 2-20-2019-A. Um, all in favor of the motion, please. Oh, I'm sorry, it's the roll call vote, right? Mm -hmm. Are you or oh, Sue? West. Yes. Leesler. Yes. Herman. Yes. Thank you. Um, no, word, no resolutions for approval. And uh, Mayor Hampton did not leave me any proclamations to proclaim here, so we'll move on to <laughs> item I, which is a table item, uh, discussion and consideration of the plaza, lift station, pump replacement. Um, uh, table for last meeting, I think the first thing we need to do is to go to untable it. I move to untable it. Thank you. Thank you, Second. Uh, first of all, we're going to vote on untabling it. All in favor of the motion to untable say aye. Aye. And opposed? We are ready to discuss it now. So I have the numbers for you, or I did provide the numbers for you. The recommendation is to go um, with more or less kind of rebuilding the existing pump. It doesn't get used enough. It is half the cost as purchasing a pump outright. And since this is like our third pump this year, uh, any cost savings that Alex can bring me is beneficial. So um, staff is recommending that we uh, do the refurbished option for $3,030.47. I see no argument with that. No. Okay. Just one question. Is it, is it fixing what we currently have or getting a new refurbished pump? No, it's fixing. So they basically take it out and uh, go through the entire unit and put the same one back in. Is there a motion to move on Alex and Christian's suggestion? So moved. Can I move for second? Yes. Moved and seconded, no problem. Uh, moved and seconded to approve the uh, reconditioned uh, lift station, or public placement for the plaza lift station. Any other discussion, no. questions, comments? No. <laughs> All in favor of motion, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Going into motion for approval. First item is the claims list. I think that there was a new one put on our space here. So, please move the board on the board of the council on this. I move to approve the claims list as adjusted. Thank you. I'll second. So we seconded to approve the claims list presented. Any discussion? Otherwise, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion so carries. Item two, discussion consideration of the application three. Council action as needed. Mr. Chris. As I say, this will likely be your smallest pay application moving forward, um, thanks to Mother Nature. but. This pay application number 3107-531-37 is the amount, and OPN has recommended uh, approval of this payout. So a motion from council to accept that recommendation and pay out I number three. I move approval of payout number three. A second. You. Second by staff. Um, any other questions, discussion? Otherwise, all in favor of the motion to approve the application number three on the Burrage Family Community Wellness Center, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Discussion and consideration of application for grant funds from the Wayne County Housing Trust Fund. What's the background there, Chris? Uh, so the Mount Vernon Housing Commission obviously has been um, undergoing a few changes, but kind of the, the first large recommendation to come out of that group will be an application to the Housing Fund for Lynn County. Um, they're going to seek $20,000 from the housing fund and it will be used as a, a rehab program for LMI residents. Um, they're expecting to grant up to $3,000 for those that qualify under those LMI guidelines. Mm -hmm. um, our matching funds 
would come from our current LMI set aside. There's a little over ten thousand dollars in there right now, so um, we're expecting to about two thousand. Should we get those funds? That two thousand um, match would actually go to uh, Easy Cog to help administer the program, so they qualify the, the candidates and mm. go through that process for us. So uh, we wouldn't necessarily have to worry about all of the in-house. So this details. is just a one-year program. Um, I don't know that we'll get through it all in one year. Um, usually. Or is, so it's just a one-time correct. And a one -time fund. Now I would say this. I think the um, the hope or my hope is that uh, this will spark interest into other LMI housing projects because we do start to get a decent amount of money potentially from the two subdivisions to go into our own LMI account, mm -hmm. um, and whether or not. We continue to seek funds from the Housing Fund of Lynn County, or we kind of mirror some of these other programs that are already created and using our own funds uh, to keep them going. So mm -hmm. there's potential for this program to kind of continue in one facet or another. I don't know where all the sources are for income for this fund, but for this fund, but I'm very glad that we are building up a reserve for that purpose. Mm -hmm. um, Thanks for having a funding source there. Um, so, so at this point in time, the the actual application has not been submitted. The committee is actually um, having some discussion as to how to call it, um, how to do their match against this. So, um, right, we're not actually approving tonight. So you would approve the, basically, you would approve the city applying for those funds. Um, and certifying that we have the matching funds. So uh, the details of an individual program um, can still be tweaked okay. between mm -hmm. now and then, but the city is more or less saying that yes, we'll, we'll give 2000 and we want you to seek out the 20000 from the housing fund. Mm -hmm. right. So um, I move approval of the application from the Housing Commission of Mount Vernon to seek grant funds from Lynn County Housing Trust. And I'll second. Thank you. Any further questions or discussion? Mm -hmm. um, thanks for getting this out there, Chris, and let's get ahead of this. And um, are you officially the representative to, mm -hmm. or you're on it in one form or another? Okay, thank you. Um, motion is approved. The um, grant fund from the Lynn County Housing Trust Fund, get that started. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Which carries. I have four discussion considerations sitting in public hearing with ordinance amending Chapter 92 water rates in the Mother Municipal Code. I believe that date will be April 1st. So, Chris, yeah, it will be mention? April 1st for the next two items. <coughs> um, as I stated, we, we could get away with just the five years for water potentially. Um, sewer probably isn't going to be done in five years, but um, I think it's probably good just to do it at five years and then revisit that and we know exactly what our costs are going to be with the uh, nutrient reduction portion of our plant upgrades. So, so we're just setting public hearing dates to get the ball moving. I did give you the existing ordinance language for both of them, um, so you can see that, but it will be minor, obviously, minor changes to the dates in that paragraph uh, that will just extend the five years from the date, so. So I know approval to set the public hearing date for the mm -hmm. chapter, 20, chapter 92 water rates. Um, do I stick the date? April for April 1st. Yeah. For April mm -hmm. 1, 2019. Thank you. I'll second. Who mm -hmm. seconded? Questions? Otherwise, I will accept the Green day of April first. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Same idea on sewer. Correct. Okay. Anything else to add, Chris? No. Nope. Otherwise, I'm going to entertain a motion on that. Set it public hearing. I'll move that we set April first as the public hearing date for the ordinance amending Chapter 99 sewer service charges. I Thank you. And second. Okay.
Um, again, setting the date of April 1st for the sewer charge um, updates. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Possible change order. Change order number three on discussion consideration for the West Burge Family Community Wellness Center. That's one that's uh, generally just asking you to deny this request. Garland knows that we're going to deny this request. Um, we will likely uh, have an opportunity to grant additional days on the contract at some point, but um, the five days for the over excavation, the ten days that actually went beyond when they were asking at the time, they didn't like this change order in this format. So we'll negotiate with Garland moving forward. Hopefully Mother Nature will be nice to us and give us some days back. Got six months to recover, so mm -hmm. from that opportunity, um, you do need a motion to action deny. to not take any action. On uh, motion to deny. To deny. Okay. <coughs> Thanks for clarifying that. Motion to that so I motion to deny uh, the consideration of change order number three. Okay. Second. Motion to deny the consideration of change order number three for the Lister Burridge family. Seven. I second that. Thank you for the motion. Any comments or questions yet? Otherwise, all in favor of the motion to deny uh, change order number three in the West Burridge Family Community Wellness Center, please say aye. Aye. And opposed? The motion carries. And seven, discussion and consideration of marketing RFP for the West Burridge Family Community Wellness Center. Um, given the importance of this facility uh, bringing in revenue to help offset this operation, um, one of the things that we've, we've done Matt, myself, the Parks and Rec Board, we've come up with almost four pages worth of things that need to be done between now and when this opens, including starting selling memberships uh, four months before the doors open. So, as we had discussions, one of the places that we felt money would be well spent is to bring in somebody to help uh, identify a logo, start a website, market materials, uh, all of the items that we know we're going to need. We could potentially lean on um, local volunteers, but given the short time frame that we have, basically three or four months, um, we thought it was best to RFP for consulting services to get that done. This would come out of the budget, which uh, there's money for. So um, I don't currently, I gave you a ballpark estimate um, just on my past experience that this likely won't be inexpensive, but um, we won't know until we get the RFP back. So. Who will be doing the selecting once you get three or four or five whatever RFPs? Uh, parks typically what happens is Parks and Rec Board with okay. um, input from Matt will, will recommend to the council to select. Price obviously always uh, dictates a little bit of that, but um, usually what will happen is we'll send the RFP out, we'll interview the organizations, and then it's kind of our relationship um, scenario. So the gist of it is they're going to create the brand, the logo, <coughs> the style guide, the templates for the website, and then are you guys going to be able to, on a day-to-day -day basis, do that, carry it from that point? That's, okay. that's the belief, yes. Okay. They're going to train us ahead of time on how to utilize these resources yeah. and then take it from there and it'll be now in our hands. Great. We might consult with them in future for mm -hmm. changes or anything additional that we want to add or consider, but I think uh, that's the goal. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I can approach if you want. This May 1st, too quick timeline. Yeah, we're going to give a good pool of. Um, yeah, the. the the marketing RFP isn't actually that extensive, so if we were looking for architectural services or um, engineering or something like that, we might go out a little bit further, but uh, one, there's not as many marketing firms that do this, first of all, and second, what we're actually asking for um, in general is more or less, again, going back to the relationship and then samples of where they've done this in other places. So. It shouldn't be that expensive an RFP for them to put together. 
<laughs> my experience working in advertising agencies is that that's not unrealistic. They can turn that around. And also price-wise, I mean, it, it might sound like a high dollar amount to some people, but I think it's absolutely important in terms of the value and what your challenges are in terms of generating revenue. Part of it's about establishing the brand of who and what this place is. Right, absolutely. Um, to all these different audiences. Yes. One of the challenging things we have is it has a long name. Mm -hmm. How do we brand that? How do we convince <laughs> that? How do we utilize that? It's hard to get an acronym out of that. You know, mm -hmm. six, six words in there. So mm -hmm. we're looking for guidance. We're looking for expertise. We're looking for people that have done this before, um, have molded it into a, a plan, and that's, uh, that's going to be beneficial. And then a return on investment, I think, is going to go a long way. So, I mean, like you said, selling memberships, that's the key. Getting people into the door, getting to know who we are, branding it, uh, website, um, marketing, all those things. Just, just, we're just looking for some guidance there. And I think one thing that's really important in this process, and I think I saw it in here that it's, it's touched on, is remembering the different audiences that you're speaking to. Yeah. Um, you know, people inside the community, possibly, yeah. possibly people outside the community. Sure. And um, how those people are going to be reached. Yeah, we, we see this as possible destination, regional destination yeah. point for some of the amenities that we have. Um, mm -hmm. So it'll be important to reach out to some of those folks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. All right, we've got a motion. Or we've got what do we need? Council action meeting. What do you need from us? Motion to approve the RFP to allow us to go out to RFP. I move to allow the process to begin on the marketing RFP. Is okay. that enough? Yeah. <laughs> so we have a date of May one of nineteen. You'll have yeah, you'll have a second vote where they'll actually we'll have a formal contract with the selected group. Okay. So this is just giving us permission to go out and have the interviews, uh, seek the RFP process, but. Are you good on the motion, Sue? You got the motion? Yes, I did. Second. second. Thank you. Let's move to second. Don't need to, yet, Matt. Uh, move to second to send out a marketing RFP on the West Burge County Wellness Center. Mm -hmm. Okay, the motion, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Siders, discussion on the Nature Park Trail options. Well, we bring this back to you. Yeah. I think with one new council member, and so I don't know if Debbie's any history. I'd like a little. Okay. So I'll try to do the best I can with what you have in your hands there. Um, I know you've got an updated trail uh, diagram and an updated cost, but I think in the packet was there some preliminary information? Mm -hmm. Some old maps and so forth. The original design of the Nature Park Trail was going to go along what we call 3rd Street, which is basically where there is no sidewalk, there is no trail currently. Mm -hmm. And that was going to start at the entrance of the park, roughly, and go all the way down 3rd Street to an alley uh, in between A and B Avenue. Because there's an existing sidewalk that would carry it all the way to A Avenue. Um, when we came with that original recommendation, Park and Rec Board and Park and Rec uh, Director, my staff, came with that initial recommendation, uh, some council members had some reservations about several things. One being that um, we would be installing a trail in front of five pro private properties, and we would be maintaining that property, or that uh, trail, excuse me which means we would be clearing the snow, we'd be uh, taking care of it if it was um, broken or disrepair, those kind of things. Uh, not all citizens in Mount Vernon get that privilege. Okay? That was one of the concerns. So we were asked to come back with maybe a second option or a third option, a couple of other options. And so we did, back in, I think it was August of 2018, came back with an option A and an option B. Option A, if I recall off the top of my head, can't pull it up right now. But option A, I believe, was going through the park itself, um, up the drive, and then it would continue into the park, or across the park, and connect it forth. And then option B was to continue along third, come into the park, and then connect to the fourth, fourth street uh, entrance. Mm -hmm. So with the combination of those two, um, those two options, Council wasn't quite sold on it, but they also wanted to hear what the response was with the new option A going into 4th Street entrance 
and those property owners and how they would be affected. There are four property owners uh, that would be affected in that area. It's the 4th Street entrance. Uh, three of them which right away gave us a blessing to go ahead and move forward with the project. A fourth one we just could not get a hold of. He had an odd schedule. Um, was out of town quite a bit, and finally about two weeks ago, we were able to sit down and communicate with this individual. And after explaining how this was going to work and how, how it would impact his property, he's all for it and in favor of it. So now all four property owners are in favor of that option. So just to share with you that way. Um, the original option, I'll call it C, the original option, the very first option, uh, two of the property owners were against the, the trail itself. So give you a little bit of background there. Um, with this, neck, this latest option that V&K has done for us, you can see that the cost is under the $100,000 threshold that we had actually planned for this trail. Mm -hmm. So even with engineering fees factored in, we're at 99, 960. So I bring to you that, that I guess we'll call it option D. I don't know the new option um, of what the on the nature park would look like. So the the option that you were handed tonight is is the original option A and a portion of option B. So what they the Parks and Rec board had indicated was a desire for a little trail connection. Mm -hmm. Um, that will get back to the dog park. So that this entire option is estimated to be just under $100,000. Your original option, your original um, trail that went straight across and, and down the alley was actually $113,000. So um, this is a little bit of a cost savings. Again, our goal being the cross on Highway 1 is at 4th. Um, there's there was, or before this trail, there's no safe way for the kids on the east side of the community to walk to school. So that was the goal. I will say that there it would be um, walking lights, trail lights, as part of this project when it gets back into Nature Park. Those are, are hooded towards the property owner so that they don't reflect into their yard. But it does light up the trail because Nature Park has very little light, and if we're going to push people back through it uh, from a, a security and risk aspect. We want to make sure that there is some light that can be seen from the road. So. And the lights are included in the cost? And the lights are not included in the cost. Yes. Either the wiring, the trenching, the light posts, and the light fixtures are not included currently. Correct. Okay. Any estimates? So, yes. What to anticipate there? 8 ball fire? The lighting? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we've got power at the end of fourth, isn't that what we discussed, Matt? Mm -hmm. So we wouldn't need a separate meter and a lot of those expensive items like that. So fifteen, twenty thousand should get us somewhere in that ballpark of getting the lit, depending upon the fixtures that we choose. Will the, will the lights be similar to what's already going down? The idea is to use the similar lights that are on the okay. current trail right now. Mm -hmm. Then the intersection of the current trail is the sidewalk that goes over that bridge, that footbridge right there. Mm -hmm. Are we going to ease that curbing? So we're going to cut the curb and that'll be a, a straight across okay. Um, motion. Yeah. Okay. It'll yeah. be a crosswalk there as well. Good, 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 good. And yeah. this is going to be a six <laughs> Yes, I walk every day yeah. that way. You've got to zigzag to get... Well, it's two. just you because you're crossing over quite an extensive piece of... Yep. And it's a bad angle. There's an angle there of a curve and everything else. Sure. Yeah, we're aware. Absolutely. Sorry. This is a six foot wide? Six foot wide currently, yeah. At what point you talked about some type of rock? Is that in it or not in it? No. Not, okay. That's Chris has said no. Okay. <laughs> Good. It wasn't a rock trail, it was glow in the dark rock. Um, the added expense. First of all, we were struggling to find anybody that would be willing to, to put it in. Uh, not to be outdone, though, we have tried to see if we can get this done over by the high school as part of the community wellness center. But it's, it uses um, 
Sun. Sunlight to you basically. Solar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, they have the look of mm -hmm. the old things that you used to put on your wall, the mirror, or the stars, and all that stuff. But, uh, so we haven't given up on the idea, we just wouldn't do it here. With the light, um, we're still about where we were expecting to be a year and a half ago when we were talking about this in the CIP. So mm -hmm. this would come from the uh, sales tax funds for trails. Mm -hmm. So there is, there is money available. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, questions about the trail. Yeah, and if I may just add that, you know, obviously you can see this trail does go through the park. It does impact our disc golf course, but we talked about the parking deck board level. We could modify the holes that are affected. We're going to have to move a tee box. Uh, we're going to have to move maybe a hole or two. Uh, sort of modify that a little bit, but um, it's doable. Um, so it's not, not to say that it's not functional, but just keep in mind that it does go through the middle of the park where there's a disc golf course. Are those the little white things that we see on this drawing? Uh, I can what, them out. What, what are those little yeah, white so things? I'm not sure what the white. Those are just the tree diameter labels. They should have been turned off. Uh, we do see some of the darker gray. Yeah. Those are the pads. Considered, you know, being able to remediate, keeping as many of the trees as possible intact. You know, yeah. The the final, well, to be sure, the the final um, layout will always be subject to change when they actually start to survey it out. But yes, um, removal of any of the trees would be frowned upon unless it's absolutely mandatory. We have quite a few new trees in this area, yeah. so yeah. our goal is not to remove those. Okay. Good. It's a good solution. Good compromise. Yeah. Okay. Nice work. Got a recommendation from uh, Parks and Rec Board and Director for Option D, as you saw in the uh, zip that was left on our table tonight. What is the role of the group here? I move approval of the Nature Park Trail Option D. As presented this evening. I second. Any other questions or discussion? Everyone's all in favor of the motion, please say aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Now, can I just ask one more question? Yes. Um, I noticed that the comprehensive trail plan was in our packet as well. Is this something that was part of that original? Comprehensive plan. Yes, this is just a component. Of yes, it actually is, and that's one of the reasons why Park and Rec Board is so strong in recommending this. Mm -hmm. Is it was part of the, the comprehensive trails plan, going through the park and going to the Fourth Street entrance. And sorry, Tony. If you were, if you've seen the visioning document, there's actually a upgrade to the Fourth Street entrance as well, with some planters, some uh, landscape uh, elements, so forth. So it was going to beautify that entrance, as opposed to what it currently looks now, as it's just a simple. Mm -hmm. transition into the park. Mm -hmm. So um, I mean, that's still out there as an option. We can look at it later as capital item. Okay. Completion date? Pardon me? Completion date? Uh, well, <coughs> what do you think, Dave? This fall? Sure. Okay. <laughs> 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 Sounds good. you got a wellness center. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Next fall. Okay. Yeah. We already discussed um, when we would take bids on the project, but it could possibly be a fall project um, this year. It could actually wait until spring of next year. Um, we want to make sure that we get the best prices, so we'll look at the bidding atmosphere. In terms of the budget, how do we? It would carry over. Funds, yeah. Okay. Because it's sales tax, it's just uh, it's a separate fund anyway. So, mm -hmm. um, I mean, yeah. you, you have roughly two hundred thousand dollars in there to give you some idea. It's just a matter of. Getting the projects approved and moving. Thank you. Continuing on, um, consideration of pool rate increases for 2019 season. I'm just going to stay up here if that's okay. Yep, yep. <laughs> um, as I do 
Each year, when we look at the budget, I'm always looking to make sure that our fees are where they need to be. This year, um, two years ago, uh, the heater was actually put in roughly halfway through the season. Last year was our first full year. Um, Matt and both, both Matt and the Public Works, or Public Works, Parks and Direct Board, uh, did not want to make any obvious changes to the pool fees until we had a full season of that heater and then we could see what was um, what we were going to see for expenses and individuals coming in. So I think what Matt's uh, put in front of you for these increases for this year are small but warranted to offset some of the additional costs for heating the pool. So I do, if I may add, I also remind everyone that it's been eight years since we've uh, increase any fees at the pool itself. So. so my thinking in looking at this from a marketing perspective that if people are looking at that daily admission cost going up a buck a time, it probably will encourage more people to buy a pass or to want to buy a pass because of the value of that. Did you look at that when you're forecasting in terms yeah. of switching any numbers? Yeah, we threw out a couple of numbers. We threw out 425, 450, 475, and 5, and wanted to see where we would land. One of the issues that Park and Rec Board felt was if you go to 450, 425, 475, you're dealing with a lot of quarters. On the flip side, you could argue that, well, in those quarters, those people might be going to the concession stand and spending them right away. But our, our difficult part of justifying that is, is giving out change or having the exact change of the participant coming in. It's hard when you have a four, you know, 25 cent dollar amount. So, um, also we looked at and compared to a lot of different facilities around us, and a lot of more five dollars as well. So, we looked at a couple of things, and this was their solution to making a recommendation for that. So, I, I totally understand your your point. No, my going point, from four to five. I don't points. have a problem with that. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying that I'm thinking that from a sales forecasting perspective that it's more likely that you'll see more people buy passes as the daily rate increases. Did you look at that number at all? I mean, I just wanted to make sure that you were thinking that those numbers would come out okay. Yeah, I think our five, daily passes is... $5 dollar jump in the pass. I think, I think it may increase our, our, our passes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, but that's a good thing, I think, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Yeah. Um, and most of the that's daily admissions that we have are out-of-towners, um, individuals that, well, like daycares, mm -hmm. show up, mm -hmm. uh, those kind of things. So, yeah, there are still some locals that pay the daily admission fee, but the majority of our passes are local people. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we won't know until we get to it. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, we did look at that and talk about that, that it might increase our, daily, our pool pass uh, mm -hmm. revenue. Um, but our, our full, our, the full look of this fee increase was more of to get it to a round number mm -hmm. um, and to make it on par with what surrounding communities are charging for their pool. Yeah. We looked at our amenities compared to theirs and you know, we just felt that kind of the quaintness of our pool, the popularity of our pool, the cleanliness of our pool, all of those things. We heard a lot of comments from people in the public that heard, heard we were raising rates and some of the folks that I had talked to actually individually said they didn't have an issue with it. So here's a, a thought. Did you guys consider the lap swim? Being a person that's been a lap swimmer from three to four instead of to three fifty, because in that case you didn't do it by on the dollar. Yeah, we we did talk about that. We just lap swimmers. There's I mean there's not a ton of them out there. No. So we just felt that impact wasn't as great. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about it, yeah, but we didn't make that move. We, know, we understood that a lot of our lap swimmers also are seniors, mm -hmm. and we don't have a senior rate per se in the pool, so all they come is for lap swim. They don't mm -hmm. come to enjoy the you know, pool for the full day, they just come mm -hmm. for the 45 minutes for the lap swim. So that was the other reasoning behind that. Okay. It was going to be a short duration of stay. Yeah. This may be old information, but I have a recollection of. Um, Security and concession stand, whether a product or cash, because it has been an issue in past years. Is it? Are we past that? How is our security there? Are we? Yeah, we have not had a, a break in or anything of that nature for. What? <laughs> they're they're back. They're knocking on the wood back there. Well, I've not been away aware of any issues for the last five, four or five years. So it's been. So yeah. So not to create a 
an issue here, but with the wellness center being able to take credit cards, mm -hmm. debit cards, are we will we eventually go to that at pool? So one of the things we're looking at right now with the facility software uh, part of the wellness center is to combine it with the pool and mm -hmm. possibly concession stand over to Elliott, something like that, mm -hmm. where you'd be able to utilize a mobile app. So if you get an iPad or something of that nature for those locations, and be able to act with that uh, facility software on, at those locations. So when we come to you with the facility software package, keep that in mind that it's a wellness center asset, but also it can be utilized in multiple uh, facilities around our uh, park and rec department. If we are allowed to use the app, I think the big question mark has always been at the pool. It's only an operation, truly an operation for about three months. So. Um, up until a year and a half ago, we didn't have very good connection from an internet perspective down there, so having a credit card machine was almost worthless. Um, both Matt and Nick were, it you know, wasn't that long ago that they were both going home to send emails half the time because their free drop off the water tower was uh, ineffective. So, um, I'm sure Joe can attest to that. <laughs> Is it temporary Wi-Fi? Well, we have, we have, we, well, we have, we have media com now. So we made those changes. I just want to let you know, I don't want to, to sit here and even with the, the purchase of the software for the wellness center say that we're going to immediately move to that. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we are looking at software that has the capability yeah. of doing that. So, uh, and, and hopefully um, we'll be in, in such a place that the, the wellness center will also be the hub where they come in and sign up for, um, for kind of where Katie's working out of City Hall, she could actually be at the wellness center. And, um, so we'll be able to have that credit card machine there as well. So mm -hmm. that's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks, Brian. Good recommendations from our park and direct director as well as the parks and rec board about uh, price increases for the pool for the 2019 season. Where's the will? The board here. I move approval of proposed fee increases for the pool for 2019. A second. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Thank you Thank very much, you Mr. Siders. Um, a liner for a sewer lining project between 7th and 8th Avenue. So this is one that Nick and I say we were gifted. You were gifted? Mm -hmm. We were gifted. Um, this is a sewer that's been problematic uh, for a number of years. And it's problematic for a number of reasons. Easements, uh, building location on top of it, a number of things are wrong with this uh, sewer line. It is starting to cause um, some sinkholes. Uh, in the property owner, especially off of 7th Avenue, the sewer pipe runs by their driveway and your sinkhole is being created by their driveway and their garage. Um, we're fortunate that this sewer pipe um, can be aligned, not all of them can be, but uh, we've looked at the alternatives, we're, up, we're not digging it up, we're not digging some of the way up. Um, we don't particularly want to try and relocate this. There's a geothermal well off of 7th Avenue that we don't want to get into either. So um, before it gets any worse, this wasn't a budgeted amount, but uh, we're asking to move forward with the $60,000 expense to get this sewer line so that uh, hopefully we salvage this for a few more years. So the lighting is the issue now. You're not worried about the easement at this point. Correct. We can fight that battle. I mean, we can go through an entire um, legal process in order to get the easement, but the, the issue at hand right now is to, to get it so it's stable. Breezeways on the property farthest. Off the 8th Avenue side? West, yeah. Okay. Price of the 16 grand range. Uh, 
the data is put up in here with three firms. Are we ready to move forward to this? Yeah, actually, we've been dealing with this for almost a year now. So the property owner, especially the one that has the driveway, um, has been asking what our plan is. The individual that owns the ground, it's not actually the one that has the driveway. The individual that has the geothermal and the big open lot is the one that uh, brought it to our attention first because some of the, the pot blowing is actually taking place on his property. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, yeah, Nick and I have been kind of contemplating how to best handle this uh, in the most inexpensive way. Uh, and this would be our best fix at this point. Yeah. I like the idea of addressing it now before it's important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's been for a little bit. What? It's been for a little bit. Yeah. It's a novel concept. Yes. Mm -hmm. now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I move approval of the award to. Yeah. To, to install the sewer lining between 7th and 8th Avenue on the west. I second. We're going to second to approve a, a lining project for the sewer lining between 7th and 8th Avenue. Any clarification, discussion, or questions? And now uh, I'll call the favor motion. Please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 11, storage shed addition to Memorial Park. And, uh, um, this is as much an FYI as it is wanting to get um, your opinion on it, but the bottom of the, uh, I'll call it the basement of the visitor center, uh, is full, has been. Joe does a, a pretty good job with Nick and the, the rest of the staff at trying to keep that organized, but um, he has asked CDG and they've obliged in buying a shed, storage shed. This will have to go to HPC and jump through a few more hoops, but I wanted to make sure the council was okay with a shed being constructed most likely in the rear of the visitor center where we can get it to fit. I don't have an exact location for you, but uh, that's kind of the plan right now. We kind of keep it out of sight, but... It needs to be accessible from to drive up to it. Yes. Because it's been back there and it's convenient to be able to load those sand what do you call them? Five million Yeah, containers. <laughs> uh, I think we've all loved them. We probably all have loved them. And yeah, it's, it's a sand. So, but on the flip side, that drive crank that goes down to the back of the gazebo is the driveway that gets used for the community band and the director that comes in and the instruments and all of the things that go on with the Band, so we have to be careful not to inhibit that. Yeah, that's why we'll have to um, mark it out when we get kind of a final location, make sure that we can construct the storage shed. Uh, and that will be taken because we utilize that drive as well, the, the band. So, um, I'm, I'm not generally a fan. <laughs> I would agree, but I don't know that there is a better answer in this location. Um, I don't want any, I mean, at 144 square feet, that's about as large as I would want to see going out there. We do have the uh, small building for the electric station there that's mm -hmm. kind of tucked back in the woods, so hopefully we can be able to plant some things around this to I mean, hide it. Is there the a, option of other city facilities, except none of them are any, you know, this one is conveniently close to Main Street where all the events take place. Well, I think right. we could right. eventually at our new site have room for yeah. some of this as well, but we're a minimum of five years away from mm -hmm. having anything of the sort. And 
my guess is that we would build one building at a time out there, um, and it wouldn't be in that first building where we would have additional so five to ten years before we could have a location. Talking to Joe before the meeting, uh, he envisions this location as being not on the uh, concrete apron that's at the back door, but on that same plateau, uh, because then it does dip down to, I think, this, the alleyway that you were talking about, if I recollect that correctly. So, um, but he had wanted it on the same level as uh, the walkout from that lower level. Yeah, the side is up is a little challenging. We might not even get 800 parking for square foot building. Uh, but CDG has offered to pay for it, and before they went to HPC, I wanted to make sure this went in uh, the right order. Um, if you're kind of okay with it and want to let them go through the HPC route first, but still come back to you, we can do that as well. What action does council want to take on this? We can send out the final design as well. So. Um, there's no formal vote necessarily re required. It is your, you know, your part and you represent that part. So um, we can ask for a formal vote. But if you'd like, if you're OK, I guess, let me say this. If you're not dead set against it, then we can allow them to continue on in the process. And then we can circle back with you when we have a final design and what each PC agreed with. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I didn't need a formal vote on this one, Tom. I just uh, okay. Does it need to be tabled? Per se? Nope. Okay. No. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks for your input. Hopefully, Chris knows where we're at on this. Last item under motions for approval is the purchase of chalk the annual chalk for walking bears. Likely, this will be under forty-five hundred dollars. Um, this is an annual expense, so nothing spectacular with this one either. Do we have the drum roll with the announcement or? No, 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 I can't. I can't <laughs> video yet. Yeah. But you'll like it. Um, no, this is just yeah, an annual ask, but this is a, a reduction I think, from $100 from last year. We've, uh, we've got some chalk left over and some dozens of chalk in at the order. So um, I don't know yeah, what else to say. It's, it's, it's a cool event. I wish I could tell you what we're going to do, but I can't. I move approval of uh, purchasing the chalk for the chalk for the walk event for a purchase price that to the I second. Any questions or discussion? Did you answer for us? Uh, otherwise, I'll take a motion to combine the chalk here for the chalk for the walk event. Please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome police report. Council, I'll be quick because I don't want to cut into Matt's open mic night. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, nothing, nothing to add in the, open, in the uh, police report. I just want to notify the public and remind everybody um, that we'll be shutting down First Street West tomorrow between 4th and 5th Avenue. Uh, we put it on social media, shared it through that, and we'll be using the Nix aisle. Um, at probably shortly after the meeting tonight. I'll put out an alert to everybody let them know that's going to be shut down. It's tentatively planned from approximately 8 o'clock till 5 p.m. tomorrow, so luckily it's spring break for um, schools and, the Corn and Cornell as well, so it should be less impactful as it goes through. Small traffic vehicles um, should just be able to drive around the block and get around it. Um, we do have a designated uh, detour route of 7th Street Northwest from Highway 1 to 8th Avenue. For any commercial motor vehicles or anything like that that may need to get through there. Um, the contract company has been instructed that they're responsible for signage and marking detours and making sure everything's can order that way. So they're fully aware. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it works. I guess I'm anything to add. Any questions of Nick? Nothing to add. Good. We obviously needed to block off and mark better the Bryant Road extension where the snow was all piled up so that, yeah. that was one of the accidents that hit uh, Chief Shannon's report. Cut down my rates. <laughs> uh, uh, you ticket somebody for not being too bright on that? Uh, <laughs> um, how about Parks and Recreation? Uh, Mr. Nothing else to add. Then? I think I've said enough tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Am I 
Co yes. Co-workers are getting a little angry. <laughs> okay. You know, the, anything else in the report? Discussion items. Discussion to talk about a little bit about subdivision ordinance. Uh, I didn't really want to talk about it. I just wanted to get it in your hands. So my goal with an ordinance this big, same as the zoning, was to give this for you, give this to you for two weeks. At the next meeting, you'll set a public hearing date. We're basically a month from now, so all of our planning and zoning related amendments are 10 and 20 days notice instead of the 4 and 20 normal. Uh, my goal being to give you at least a month and a half before we even start the ordinance writing for you to, to read it, ask questions. Um, planning and zoning has been looking at this for almost the entire last year, so uh, not quite as extensive as the, the zoning code, but um, still is just as important. So. Thanks for getting it to us so we can study it. Um, reports from the Mayor and the Council Administrator. Um, you have for me to pass on. Uh, I think Joe talked about the Main Street. Did you have anything to add to that? No. Who's all going to be seeing besides you two? Me, Joe, Joe Margaret Stevens, and Casey Crown from the Bank. She's the okay. design well. Looking forward to it. We had a meeting and, and we're dividing and conquering in terms of who's going to attend which session. And they have some good ones for um, civic leadership actually on um, financing and all that kind of stuff. Grant participation. Sure, it's a good agenda. Yeah. Uh, mayor's reports, council reports, committee reports, city administrator's report. Um, I will be at IMMI in Iowa City the rest of the, well, I'll be here tomorrow and then in Iowa City the rest of the week for that conference. So, um, the last thing I was going to report is I just received an email from Scott, he has a sick child, so mm -hmm. I'm planning on attending being here and I think uh, last minute I had to... Mm -hmm. So, why effect going around? So. Nothing else to report? No. Anything else needs to come before this council? Otherwise, we are adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.